In this video, uh, I am going to explain you on the learning unit 5, which is um, the main topic is the minor food components and the subtopic is on the food additives. So what is a food additive? So food additives are usually known as chemicals that is added to preserve and or to improve the appearance and flavor of foods. There are several classes of food additives including um, colorings, antioxidants, flavor enhancers, preservatives, sweeteners, emulsifiers, stabilizers and thickeners and etc. So in food preservation, there are five uh, principles that can be applied. The first one is the removal of moisture. The second one is the altering uh, temperature. The third one is changing the pH value. Number four, using the osmotic process. And number five, the use of chemical additives. So if you look at the table here, these are some food preservation techniques that has been widely used in food industry. The first one is the irradiation. Eh? Irradiation is exposing food to ionizing, ionizing radiation. The second one, uh, drying and dehydration. So usually um, the food products are dried in the sun or in special ovens or freeze dryers. And then uh, the third one is refrigeration. So we do it at home um, a lot. And we keep the food at lower temperature between 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. And also we have another uh, technique which is called canning. So canning is when um, there is a food product, you cook it under pressure in hermetically sealed container. So this is just like the canned food that uh, can be found in the grocery store. And then salting is a preservation technique where the food products are treated with salt or strong salt solution. So this can be applied to like a salted fish, for example, or uh, a pickle that is immersed in a very strong salt solution. Eh? And then there are also uh, pickling in vinegar, so where, uh, for example, like cucumbers, they are kept in vinegar. So in our culture, we always have this um, food called acha or pickle, um, where it is kept in vinegar yeah, to prolong its chef life. And then, um, on top of all the preservation techniques, we can also uh, use the last one, which is the use of food additives. So food additives are substances that control microorganism and also chemical spoilage. There are some classes of uh, non-food additives. So these uh, food additives can be divided into six different classes. The first class is the preservative, which function to prevent microbial growth and spoilage. The second class of food additives are antioxidant, which um, is used to prevent rancidity of fats and oil. Yeah? Kalau dalam uh, bahasa Melayu, we always say that uh, minyak berbau tengik. Yeah? Minyak bau tengik is uh, one example of uh, rancidity of fats and oils. Okay, then we have another class which is the emulsifier, stabilizers and thickeners. So this food additive, this type of food additive can give texture, blends, uh, smoothness and it can stabilize the oil and water mixture. So as we all know, water and oil are not mixed are not miscible with each other. So when we add emulsifier, so this oil and water mixture can be made, uh, can be mixed with each other and form um, a solution that we call as emulsion. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the next class of food additive is anti-caking agent. 
where it can keep food fast flowing and prevent caking in humid weather. And then there are also food additive that is called as humectant, which can retain moisture. And then uh, the last class of food additive is bleach. So bleach can confer white color to food. For example, like um, when we are talking about bread, so bread can be um, the original color of bread is should be around should be almost brown. So when we add bleach to the flour, so you can or if you are using a bleach flour uh, to bake a bread, so your bread will become a very white bread, yeah. Okay, these are some of the common food additives that uh, is well used in food industry. The first one is ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is uh, vitamin C, yeah. And then, but however, ascorbic acid is not uh, very stable. So in that case, we can use the sodium ascorbate form of ascorbic acid, which is more uh, stable compared to ascorbic acid. And then we have the citric acid, which is used as a pH regulator uh, for the food. And also we have uh, lactic acid and also benzoic acid and also sodium benzoate. And we also have uh, propionic acid. So propionic acid uh, also serves as um, acid regulator in food. And another uh, another type of additive is the sorbic acid and also monosodium glutamate. Uh, glutamate. So monosodium glutamate is uh, MSG. Yeah? So it is quite popular in Asian cooking, especially. So in Malaysia, we are governed by um, food safety information system which are responsible for regulation all man-made food additives and the food additive certification must go through this approval process to assure the safety, quality, consistency and strength. Okay, you can uh, click this link for the food regulation 1985. Yeah? Okay, so uh, additional info on the regulation on food additives. So every time when we have foods, uh, we want to market a food. So it needs to be labeled with ingredient and specific food additives. And MSG in Malaysia has been given green light as food additive, which uh, a permitted flavor enhancer has been added to any food. There shall be written in the label on a packaging containing such food the words contain the chemical name of the flavor, uh, flavor enhancer as permitted flavor enhancer. So this is the regulation on food additive in terms of the uh, labeling yeah, on the package. There are five main classes of food additives. So the first one is the coloring. The second one is the preservative. Uh, the third one is antioxidant. Number four is the chemical preservative. And number five is the food flavor. Yeah? Okay, so in the next slide, we are going to um, discuss on the uh, coloring. Okay, so there are uh, these uh, coloring are the first main class of food additive. So what is the purpose of adding color? Is to improve the appearance of food. Okay. Kalau uh, if we do not add any coloring, so normally uh, um, natural, um, for example, uh, if a bread we don't add any color, so it will become like off white. Okay. Um, and um, it will retain the natural color but if you want to add uh, if you add uh, colors it will give you uh, different types of colors for example if you are baking a cake um, in Sarawak we are famous for cake lapis so cake lapis has lots of coloring so uh, in order to distinguish the every layer so you need to add some food coloring yeah? Okay, there are uh, example here. Okay. 
in sweets and jam uh, you can use sunset yellow color so that it can give you a yellow color for your sweet and also jam and in chocolate and oyster sauce i uh, usually added a, a caramel brown coloring yeah so that your sauce will look brown coloring agent uh, mostly um, obtained either from synthetic or natural uh. okay and only nine synthetic colors are currently approved for food use and 21 nature identical colors are exempt from certification and the average per capita consumption of food colors is about 50 milligram per day which is quite a lot yeah, for a coloring agent so these are the nine um, the nine synthetic um, colors uh, that is allowed in food product yeah? so uh, erythrocin, allura red, orange bee, sunset yellow, tartrazine, fast green, brilliant blue, indigo tin, and also uh, citrus red too. Okay, uh, for natural or nature identical colors, they are less stable than the synthetic one and uh, more, vari more variable, meaning um, the color itself depends, really depends on the types of food that you want to color okay the major categories of natural food colors and their sources are listed in the next table okay if you look at uh, the colorant here um, fruits like grape skin and elderberries can give uh, anthocyanin color so anthocyanin color is usually purple uh, purple and then um, Red beets, cactus fruit, pork berries, bougainvillea, amaranthus can usually give you betalin, which is um, around red, red color, yeah? red or very dark pink color. And then the caramel color can be obtained from modified sugar. So if you want to make like a pudding, but you do not want to add, um, to add colors, so you can modify the sugar and caramelize it so that it can make your pudding become brown in color and then there are also a carotenoid color which come from the seeds of bixa orellana and the cantazentin can come from mushroom crustacean fish and seaweed and also beta apocarotinol can come from orange or green vegetables and Chlorophylls from green vegetable, uh, riboflavin from milk, and others like um, carmine. Carmine is like cochineal extract, which is a uh, pink color, uh, and it can be obtained from insect. And also turmeric. Uh, turmeric is kunyit. Eh? Dalam bahasa Melayu ialah kunyit. So you can get uh, the yellow color, kukuma longa, and then you can get uh, crocetin or crocin color from saffron. Saffron is an expensive ingredient, eh? usually used uh, to to color your nasi biryani. Okay, um, if you do not have any saffron, so you can use synthetic. But um, but practice in uh, Indian Indian country India, so they always use saffron to color their uh, biryani rice. Okay, if you look at this uh, example here, I have a uh, Smarties. This is an example of Smarties that is sold in UK supermarket. You can see that uh, the ingredient contain um, milk powder, cocoa mass, cocoa butter, wheat flour, butter fat, lactose and protein, rice starch, emulsifier, um, and all other things. But please focus on the one that I highlighted in yellow. Uh, if you see, if you look at this ingredient, they are actually a natural coloring. Yeah? And if you look at the uh, color of the Smarties, it's not so bright. Okay, because it is um, natural color. So natural color are so bright compared to the synthetic colors. And you can see that they are not uh, very stable after sometimes the color will fade. Yeah, will fade over the time. 
and you can see that beetroot bread is this color okay and then the carotene is orange color and cumin is um, yellow color so normally what the difference difference between um, difference between natural and synthetic color is that um, natural color tend to give lighter color compared to the synthetic color if you compare this smarties with the smarties that are sold in Malaysia you can see that uh, in Malaysia our smarties are brightly colored okay um, that's the end of this video I will continue on the uh, other food additives in the next video